Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Dmitry Naidenov, and this is my first ever EuroPython talk. <laughs> so I'm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, quite passionate about pandas, and uh, I hope by the end of my talk, you might want to try it as well. So let me first tell you a few things about myself. So I have been a software developer for over 20 years now. I started back in the day with uh, BASIC and Pascal, went to C, C++, C Sharp, even PHP for three years. And then I discovered Python through Django. And Python became my favorite language by far. Since then, I've used it for pretty much everything. Um, Server-side software, scripting, web apps, mobile apps, uh, and all sorts of other things. So I uh, was working for uh, Canonical for four years. And I was uh, working on a port from Python to Go of a cloud deployment suite. And after that, I decided it's time to uh, get on my own. So I went full time into freelancing with Python again, happily, and uh, founded my small own company, Devilated. So what about pandas? <laughs> so seriously. Um, how many of you have used pandas before? All right, great. So have you used it for anything else than scientific and uh, statistical software? Okay. <laughs> so just a quick introduction for those of you who uh, don't know about it. So pandas is an open source Python uh, library. It was created in 2008 by Wes McKinney. Uh, it has high performance and easy to use data structures and a great API for data analysis built on the solid foundation of NumPy. And it's also very well documented um, too well, you know, in a way. <laughs> so um, I first heard about Pandas uh, in uh, Europe Python 2012, I think. And since then, I kept hearing about it from all sorts of people uh, all the time. And I decided to look into it and see actually what it's all about. I'm not from a scientific or financial background. Uh, so that was my first experience with it. Basically, I liked about it that it's easy to install. It has very few requirements, especially on Linux. It's trivial but also on Windows and Mac OS. Um, it's as fast as NumPy, yet a lot more flexible. And I personally don't really like NumPy that much because I found it somewhat counterintuitive and awkward to use. Um, Pandas also reads and writes formats in pretty much any format you might have to deal with, especially CSV, Excel, and HDF5, to name just a few, which was an obvious advantage for me. And also, since I'm quite a visual thinker, uh, I like how easy it is to plot stuff with uh, pandas, uh, with matplotlib. So I did try it, but I found some quirks and pain points, which kind of uh, put me off. And I want to share a few of them with you. So it has a good documentation, but at the time there were not a lot of tutorials and hands-on hands -on guides. You know, um, it was a bit intimidating to read all of that documentation and know where to start from. Um, there are also confusingly many ways to do the same thing, kind of unpythonic in a way, at least then. Um, also, there are lots lots of indexing, like uh, every sort of indexing operation, which was, it's also its power, but I didn't understand it then. And it was kind of, seemed to me pointless, uh, especially the multi-index. And it has same defaults for most things. It can handle lots of uh, types of data intelligently, uh, however, not uh, as fast as you might like. So 
uh, you might want to actually be specific when you want to deal with specific types of data, like data, date time or floats or integers and do some conversions in, in between. So let me tell you about a project of mine, uh, which I kind of found unexpectedly how good uh, a fit Panda is uh, for uh, some of the tasks I have to deal with. So the project is an SVG mail labels generator, uh, which means uh, send personalized mail in senders labeled on the uh, envelope in senders handwriting. And this is done uh, by following a few requirements. So one of, uh, one of them is acquire a sample of the user's handwriting on, um, on a tablet. And it's acquired in a vectorized SVG format. Then extract individual letter or symbol SVG files, small ones, from each of those sample pages per user. Then out of those, compose arbitrary uh, word SVG files and make them look as if they are written by hand. And finally, generate uh, mail labels from those words, uh, sticking them together into multi-line, multi-word uh, labels. So first, the acquisition of handwriting samples is uh, done on a tablet, stills, with, or a pen. Um, every user gives one or more of those samples, and they're saved as SVG files. And this is an example of uh, one of those. So basically, it's a standardized text that you, every user decides what to write, and it writes, them, it writes that sample on several different pages. So to have uh, uh, base for comparison, basically. And each of those things are basically SVG. Uh, the pen strokes are recorded individually in the SVG file as vectorized curves. And this is, for example, how it looks like one of the outputs of, of that process, uh, which is a mailing label uh, done for, for one of the users. So, Sorry, the zooming is kind of weird. So uh, this is the generalized process. Uh, it's a multi-stage pipeline of sorts. So it first starts with the parsing of the SVG uh, sample page. Then uh, enter pandas. Uh, pandas is used to uh, read those and present them in a tabular fashion uh, in a data frame so they can be easily uh, handled. Then there is a letter extraction process which heavily uses pandas to uh, extract individual strokes <laughs> and combine them as they were on the page so that you can uh, come from single individual strokes to actual letters and uh, then reuse those. Then there is a classification step which is done manually and basically labels each of those extracted letters S, A, B, C, dollar sign, and so on. Uh, after we have this, there is the word building stage where we select uh, letter variants for a specific word, stick them together, apply some alignment, and so on. And finally, uh, there is the labeling stage, which is uh, producing labels out of those words and aligning them ready for printing. So. Let's uh, look into the parsing first. Uh, the problem is how to extract meaningful uh, information from that XML SVG in Python. And what I found is this excellent SVG path tools library, uh, which has a lot to offer. So it has a path base class uh, and a few subclasses thereof, uh, like line, cubic Bezier, quadratic Bezier, and few other top level utilities. Each of those classes have uh, rich APIs for path intersection, calculating bounding boxes, transformation, scaling, and all sorts of other things. You can cut paths, you can like translate them, and so on. Uh, 
Um, and also it allows you to easily read and write lists of SVG paths into or from uh, SVG files and also apply some like scaling and other things. So, and it just takes a single line. So this is basically an example of how, um, how, it is, how easy it is to, to get uh, those paths from, from a file. And this SVG two paths takes a file name and a bunch of other optional arguments uh, deciding how to convert and what to convert. So it converts everything to those three uh, primitives, line, cubic, and quadratic bezier. It handles arcs, circles, and all other things. You know, it converts them all into those uh, and returns a list of path instances and a list of dictionaries which contain the extra XML attributes of uh, each of the paths. So once we have these, um, this is uh, the easiest and simplest way I found. Um, so we use uh, pandas data frame dot from records, the class method, which takes an iterable, or in this case, a generator of uh, dictionary-like objects with the same structure. And in this case, what I cared about is the actual index of that path instance within the file, and as well it's a bounding box. So the minimum and maximum horizontal and vertical coordinates that uh, fully encompass that stroke. And we get a structure that looks kind of like this. Then, onto the letter extraction. So the problem is quite computationally intensive if you address it from a naive, uh, you know, algorithm. Uh, so you need to compare each stroke with all nearby strokes, uh, which might have something to do with it, and merge them together as letters. Um, and what I found is that using a data frame, simple iteration and filtering, albeit over multiple passes, you can do that, that easily and in quite, quite quickly as well. So the multiple passes are done by basically taking the data frame and returning it modified along with two sets of indices, one for merged paths and one for yet unmerged paths, which uh, you can see here using the data frame, you can easily extract those uh, and then the, each of the steps, which I'm going to show one of them, uh, which is this merging the fully overlapping paths. Uh, basically, all of them look, look like this. So we iterate over each, over the data frame, taking each path in sequence, and then we uh, filter the data frame. Uh, for example, in this case, all the paths that fully overlap their bounding box, fully overlap with this current path. We take this as candidates, like a subset of the data frame. Then we run, run a fairly complicated merge procedure, which I won't show because it's like a page and a half, but basically what it does, it updates the data frame so that um, when you merge two paths, they have the same bounding box, so updates the X min, X max, and so on of both to uh, match the combined bounding box of both, and also updates those merged and unmerged uh, uh, sets and returns the data frame. And after each of those steps, uh, we run a update data frame step, which calculates additional properties uh, for each of the paths. And since Pandas allows this quite easily, you can chain uh, assignments like this. Uh, you know, like for example, calculating the width or the height of the bounding box, the half width, half height, which is used in some of the um, merge steps, also the area uh, with, with multiplied by height and the aspect with divided by height. And finally, we need to sort the values so that they come in kind of natural writing order, uh, top to bottom, left to right. So then once we have this, we have a, a bunch of uh, smaller files, uh, letter files, which uh, we then uh, need to classify. And this is a deliberately manual pro process as per the client requirements. 
Um, there is an external tool they used already for, for this sort of thing. There is no pandas, unfortunately. Um, so it loads the uh, merged and unclassified letters, letter SVGs, shows them one by one to a human, allows the human to align them, you know, in the box uh, of the letter uh, or the background, and also allows them to label them, like this is a dollar sign, this is a capital A, this is a lowercase L, and so on. Um, once we have this, we have labeled SVG letter files, letter variants, and then we come uh, down to the word building. So this is an example of uh, an intermediate output of the algorithm, which is a debug version showing the letters, their bounding boxes in green, and the uh, running baseline of, of the word, which is uh, the line along which uh, all the letters are aligned. So it looks like they're written on the same line. So it takes uh, a single word as an input, for example, testing. Uh, it does a selection process for, for each letter, uh, either sequentially or randomly with the seed, it picks a labeled variant for that letter. Then does horizontal composition, merging selected variants with variable kerning, which is a typographical term for the spacing between the letters. Um, and then there is a vertical alignment step, which uh, according to the running baseline aligns certain letters, like for example, G, Y, and others to are the, up the, they are either below the baseline or above the baseline as needed. And outputs a single SVG file for that word in the same uh, size. So the labeling, just to remind you how it looks, uh, basically it takes as an input an Excel file with mail addresses. No surprise here. Pandas works great with this. So the structure is one row per label, one column per line. Um, it's as simple as parsing using uh, pandas read Excel. And the generation stage builds words with variable uh, spacing, one for each column. Uh, and the alignment is uh, done with so-called variable leading. So the leading is the vertical equivalent of kerning, so the spacing between the lines. And that's it, basically. So I think I should tell you what I learned from this process, basically. So Pandas is great for any sort of table-based data processing. That was kind of an unexpected discovery for me. Um, so it might be intimidating at first if you haven't used it, there's what to read, but uh, if you learn just a few things and start from there, like filtering and iteration, you can go a long way. Um, also, take time to understand the indexing and uh, the power of multi-index, because that gives you uh, the power to deal with multi-dimensional data in a very uh, comprehensible way. Then also, of course, anytime you need to deal with CSV or Excel, which is quite a pain otherwise, with Pandas it's trivial and fast. Doesn't have to be, you know, financial data or anything. And also doc the documentation is great. There is a lot to read, so it could be a bit confusing at first, but I would suggest uh, start with 10 minutes of, uh, uh, to Pandas, which is one of the main sections of the documentation. There are also a lot of tutorials now, a lot of cookbooks, you know, uh, hands-on guides, and it, it grew a lot. There were actually recently a documentation sprint uh, for, for Pandas, which expanded that even further. So with that, uh, I have just one more thing to say. Uh, Please consider buying Wes McKinney's book, Python for Data Analysis, because it's great and it will help you a lot with uh, your journey into Pandas. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Are there any questions? We've got lots of time. Sorry, I may ask a silly question. I know you said well, all we need is Panda. Uh, to, to, to have you meet any, I mean, you, in your practical user case, 
in your practical life work, have yeah. you met some limitation of pandas? Oh yeah. Well, there are things, quirks that you tend to learn to live with, but you tend to overcome as well. Like, for example, dealing with any sort of numerical data that can have gaps in it or possibly strings or anything. Like they like turn up as nans instead of you know, something else. So if you expect to get integers, you might get floats instead. But yeah, that's yeah. The, the type converse is one one thing. Uh, another use case I, I I would like to write to our community to to pay attention to is from my work. A use case. Uh, the data the data input we got is a J, uh, nasty the JSON JSON file. It's a J, uh, JSON J, mm -hmm. as a JSON uh, nasty the JSON string. So the pandas you know use pandas read JSON can only process one level. Yeah. So I, that make it uh, very... I haven't used it personally yeah. for JSON. I think Postgres is better for that, if you can afford it. I mean, if you can have it so at our, hand. Our solu no, uh, I mean, my solution is I have to write my personal library to process this one into a data frame. But that's quite a static. So I was, I was always thinking if, if the pandas can, can absorb this feature, basically, he analyzes the JSON files uh, because the output is always, even though it's nice data, JSON, the output will be pandas, uh, will be pandas data frame. So, so I always think if pandas can absorb the the feature, basically, and firstly, step one, analysis the, the JSON file to identify the you know these yeah. like uh, keywords. You can step do two, that. just the crunch and get the data frame out. It will be a pro improvement for pandas, but pandas is splendid. I agree. <laughs> Sorry. My question is the, the limitation of the uh, pandas. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure you can go a long way using pandas for some, of, some part of that process, you know, reading the JSON, the nested JSON. Um, and for sure, if you can convert it to something more tabular, you'll get a lot more out of pandas. Cool. Are there any other questions? No one. So, I hope you try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you.